indescribable in every way. You search me out and I'm caught up in your grace. I heard my name across the ocean. You pulled me closer. The current changed. You showed me life, a new horizon, a silver lining, a brand new day. today i know it is going to be fantastic so no matter where you are watching on now.online.church or on facebook write in the chat and say hello to someone you haven't yet it is going to be an amazing morning as we get ready for worship as we get ready for our message this morning so get up on your feet arms in the air singing straight from the heart as we worship our lord
inside my soul I know, I know, I know, I know that you are in control Deep inside my soul I know, I know, I know, I know that you won't let me go Deep inside my soul Surrender everything 
take this life and breathe on this heart that is now
Oh, I just love worship. So let's pray. Lord, I just thank you that you are our light in the darkness. I thank you that no matter what we are facing in life, uh, that you are just with us and that you provide for us and care for us. Lord, I just thank you for the word that we are going to hear this morning. I know it is going to be fantastic. And I just pray that you let it resonate in our hearts. Lord, I just pray that whatever we hear and whatever we sort of take in this morning, I just pray that we live it out this week and for the weeks to come. Amen. So we are going to take our offering now. You guys should know the drill, but if it is your first time, you're under no obligation to give. The details should come up on screen. You can give by standing order or through the Church Suite app or even through our website. Um, it just gives us an opportunity to reach out to the people in our communities and just help them, especially in times of need, like it is now when they need it the most. So we're gonna have a fantastic morning with our preach. I am so excited to get your notebook and Bible out ready. Here we go. A couple of weeks ago, I was hoovering at home and I'd just uh, done the front room, I'd done the hallway and I was just hoovering at the bottom of our stairs, which is right by our front door. And I was in my own little world, hoovering away, keeping the house clean. And suddenly, as I'm hoovering, there was this absolutely almighty bang at the door. This wasn't a knock. This was a great big, uh, you know, pounding on the door. And I jumped. Uh, I, I didn't swear, but I did shout. And uh, I hear from the other side of my front door, one of my neighbours burst out in hysterics. He had seen me hoovering and he thought he would come and scare me. This pattern now seems to be developing because last week I was ironing and I was ironing in our front room and I had my back to our front room window which looks out onto the road and he had obviously seen me again ironing in our front room and thought I'm gonna have him and so he crept up and jumped up at the window and banged on the window and there I was again and jumping uh, and scared for my life. I don't know what your neighbours are like. Hopefully your neighbours are a bit kinder than mine. No, but I, I love him really. He's a great guy. But uh, we all live in neighbourhoods. We all have neighbours. Um, I don't know what yours are like. I have a great privilege of great neighbours. But I also know that sometimes our neighbours can be hard. Sometimes our neighbours can be difficult. And sometimes we don't get on with our neighbours. Um, whether, you know, there's been disagreements, maybe you just clash, I, I don't know. And I know sometimes we can have great neighbours, sometimes we can have bad neighbours. But I do know that there's a line that most of us, if not all of us, will have heard at some point in our lives. It's a line from the Bible and very often we would quote it or hear it quoted um, to us and it says, love God and love your neighbour. And um, that line, it, it can be quite common. I, I, I pretty much guess that all of you at some point in your life have heard someone say, love your neighbour. Maybe it's when you've not been nice to someone and someone said, hey, aren't you a Christian? Aren't you meant to love your neighbour? Um, maybe it's been at church, maybe it's been somewhere, but it can become a, a little bit of a cliche. We hear the line that often, love your neighbour. But it's that line that I want to look at uh, this week and next week. That line from the Bible, love your neighbour. Those three words that can seem so small and simple, but can actually revolutionise our world and our life. See, when Jesus said that word, love thy neighbour, uh, he was quoting from Leviticus. But what had happened is someone had come up to him and they said, teacher, teacher, tell us what is the greatest commandment? You see, if you've read your Bibles, if you know your Bibles, you'll know that in the Old Testament, there's a lot of law. There's there's loads of commandments and they, it's there's loads of content 
in there. But the people believed, you know, if I can get it right, then I'll be blessed. And so this teacher, he's saying, well, tell us, tell us, Rabbi, tell us, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? What is the best way for me to be blessed? And it's a great question because sometimes we can be overwhelmed by how much content there is in Christianity. And maybe if you've read your Bible, you can be overwhelmed by how much there is in there. And so he said, Jesus, what is what is the greatest commandment? If there is only one thing that you could tell me to do, what would that thing be? If there's just one way that I should live, what is that one way that I should live? Summarise it for me. Give it to me simply. And so Jesus uh, turns to this person and, and, he, and, he, and he says this. He says, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all, with all of your soul. And then he says, but the second greatest commandment is like it. Love your neighbour. Love your neighbour. Three simple words. But actually, when we break that down, it's completely radical. You see, Jesus knew what he was doing. He knew what he was saying. These weren't just throwaway words. He said, listen, this is, this, is, this, this is the summary of the whole of the Old Testament. This is the summary of what we believe. If you can get these two things right, actually love God and love your neighbour, then we're going to be OK. But he wasn't just talking about our next door neighbours. He wasn't just talking about the people that we live by. He was talking about the people in our community. Our, our wider neighbourhoods, the people that we work with, our family, the people, yeah, in, in our street, but also the people that are affected by our behaviours and by our attitudes to life as well. Those are my neighbours. Our neighbours are a little, not a lot bigger than old John, who lives at number 34. Who is, who is our neighbour? And Jesus here was saying, love your neighbour. Love your neighbour neighbour and we can say yeah that sounds great and these words can become a little bit of a, a cliche but when we look at our lives do we actually really love our neighbours see some of us have great neighbours but I know there's been times when our neighbours have not been so great uh, and our neighbours these are our next door neighbours have caused us issues uh, and they've kept us up all night with their loud music and they're banging on the walls and their kids screaming maybe now our neighbours think that of us I don't know but um it's not been easy to love on our neighbours in fact it's been easy to hate on our neighbours it's been easy to talk bad about our neighbours I don't know about you, but love your neighbour sounds great. But then when you hear a little bit of gossip about someone that you know, it turns from love your neighbour into gossip about your neighbour. In the business world, instead of love your neighbour, we have make money off your neighbour. Abuse your neighbour. When we hear about problems in our communities, instead of love your neighbour, actually quite e easily it becomes, oh, let's forget about our neighbours. Let's ignore our neighbours. When you're driving down the road and someone cuts you up, instead of love your neighbour, we have shout at your neighbour, make rude signs towards your neighbour. Loving our neighbours can be quite hard. And I think that's why Jesus said this is such an important commandment and it's one when we get right. Actually, it can change our lives and it can change our communities. It can change our neighbourhoods. It can change our worlds because loving our neighbours is important, but loving our neighbours is hard. It's easy to say and it's a cliche, yeah, I love my neighbour, but do we always love our neighbours? Or do we sometimes hate our neighbours, ignore our neighbours, abuse our neighbours, second guess our neighbours, gossip about our neighbours. But the Bible says, and Jesus says, hey, this is, this is the great commandment, love your neighbour. Love your neighbour. And so we're going to look at this over the next couple of weeks, how, how we love our neighbours. And I'm no expert at this, but there was a man who was an expert at loving 
his neighbours and his name was Jesus. And so we're going to look at a couple of things from the life of Jesus. This week we're going to look at actually how Jesus's mindset was different and how that helped him to love his neighbours because he saw them in a different way to how we might see our neighbours. I don't know uh, if you uh, watched Only Fools and Horses, a great classic British uh, TV programme. And the last episode of Only Fools and Horses, it follows the life of uh, Del Boy and Rodney. And they've never had much money. They've always kind of got by from day to day, uh, trading uh, out in Peckham Market, uh, a bit of buying, a bit of selling. And they go to a lockup that they've got, a garage that they've got. And... Um, sorting things out and there's just an old an old pocket watch there and at first they're just throwing things around but they don't realize that this pocket watch is of incredible value and sometimes we don't realize the value of the things that we are holding uh, i've never had a story like this happen to me but i've heard stories i wish it did happen to me where people don't realize the value of the things that they are holding they've just got something and it's tucked away in a wardrobe somewhere and then someone says hey that is of great value when you watch the antiques road show and people bring their things in and they thought oh i don't really know i just thought i'd come and get it valued and the, the presenter will say hey this is worth fifty thousand pound people are shocked they're changed because they never understood the value of what they were holding before, but sometimes when we understand the value of what we're holding, we treat that thing differently. And I wanna tell you that we are people of incredible value, of incredible value. You know what Jesus says over us and the way he lived and the way he died for us, it shows that we are of an immense value. In 1 Peter 1, verse 18 it says you know it's not you've not been purchased with mere things such as silver or gold those mere things such as silver and gold and then verse 19 but actually you have been purchased with the blood of jesus christ god's son hey your value is absolutely immense your value is so much that your life could not be purchased with silver all gold, but it took the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to come down from heaven to die for us. That is your value, that God himself would die for you. Do you know your value today? You're not worth a hundred pound, you're not worth a thousand pound, you're not worth a million pound, you're not worth a billion pound. You are worth the blood of Jesus Christ. And to him, silver and gold are nothing. You know, he owns the cattle on a thousand hill. If he could have any resource that he wants, but actually you are worth so much that he would pay with his life for you. Mike Pilavachi, who was a, a youth worker headed up the Soul Survivor Network, and um, he used to tell a story of God going to Tesco's. And as God is walking around Tesco's with his supermarket trolley, he would see someone on the shelf. He would see, you know, a Marcus Wickman on the shelf. He said, oh, I'll have one of those. And he puts it in his trolley. He keeps wandering around and he, he sees someone else. He puts it in his trolley. And this story continues as, as he walks around Tesco supermarket and, he, and he, gets, he gets people. He puts them in his trolley and then he gets to the checkout. And the cashier says, OK. How would you like to pay for this today? Will it be credit card? Will it be check? Oh, I don't think we can pay for things with check anymore. Will it be cash? And God himself says, no, no, no. And he climbs into the till and he pays for us with his life. You are worth so much. And sometimes it's hard to see the worth in ourselves. But if we could see ourselves with the eyes that God sees us, he would say, hey, you are worth so much that I gave my life for you. I gave it all up for you because you are worth so much. I want you to know 
today that you have incredible value, that you have incredible worth, even when you can't see it with your own eyes, even when you don't know it. Ah, there is a God who knows how much you are valued, how much you are worth, because he made you, he designed you, he gave his life for you so that you could live. And that is so true for you, but that is also true for your neighbours. It's true for the people that live down the road from us. It's true for those people that we were gossiping about. It is true for that person that has been ripping us off. It is true for that person that we are competing with in business. It is true for that person that cut us off as we were driving down the road. It is true for that person who was really rude to you. It is true of that person at Tesco's who broke the two metre social distance in rule and they weren't even wearing their mask properly. They are worth an incredible amount because Jesus died for them. Because God made them, he designed them and he put them on this world for a purpose. And we are his children and we have incredible value, value that sometimes we do not realise. But our neighbours have an incredible value in the eyes of God, so much so that he gave his life for them. He didn't purchase them with silver or gold, but he gave his life for them. Love your neighbour. Do we see the value that our neighbours have? Do we see them in the same way that Jesus sees them? I think sometimes we don't. Because if we really see them with the value that Jesus sees them, we would treat them differently. We would love them differently. If someone cuts you up as you're driving down the road, and then you realise it's one of your friend's children, you probably won't react in the same way that you would if it was someone else. A few months ago, I was driving uh, down the road and I turned into a uh, valley road in Worksop and uh, the, all these school kids were coming out of school at the time and they were all crossing the road and I was like, this is my right of way, I'm not gonna stop for these children. And I came round the road and I turned the corner and there was these kids walking across the road and I was annoyed at them and I had to stop because if not, I would have hit them. And I looked at who was crossing the road and it was one of our young people. It was uh, the child of people that come to our church. And you know what? No longer could I shout at them. No longer could I look at them. No longer could I give them a death stare because it was the child of someone that I knew and someone that I loved and someone that I respected. And sometimes we don't see people in that way, that those people are God's children. They are people that God loves. They are people that God gave his life for. And we don't love on them because we don't see the value in them. We don't recognise the value that that person has. We don't see their value. And if we're going to love our neighbours, if we're truly going to love our neighbours, we need to be people that see their value value. And instead of being people that may tear their value down, we need to be a people that build their value up. We won't talk bad about people, but we will talk good on people. We will call out the good things in their lives because you know what? They have value. If God knows they have value and God designed them and God made them and God put them on this earth, hey, that is not by accident. That person has value. And as Christians, as Christ followers, we need to be people that call the value out of people, that build the value up in people, that help other people know how much they are worth, how much they are loved. Will we be people that see others in the way that God sees them? We Will we see the value in other people? We live in strange times at the moment. And there's so much anxiety in our nation, in, in our world. And there's so much uncertainty. And it is such an important time to love our neighbours. To love our neighbours. There is a world that needs the church, that needs you, that needs me 
to see their value and to love them like they should be loved, to treat them like they should be treated. Del Boy and Rodney on Only Fools and Horses. Hey, when they found out the value of this watch, they treated it so differently. Those people on the Antiques Roadshow, when they find out the value of what they are holding, they treat it differently. Will we see the value of that neighbour who annoys us, that keeps us up, that plays their music so loud? Will we see that value? Because God sees that value. And hey, he saw the value in you and he saw the value in me. Sometimes when we don't see that value ourselves, hey, God sees that value in us but he sees that value of others as well. Will we love our neighbours? We read our children a book uh, by a guy called Max Licardo, and it, it features these wooden people and they uh, go round and they put red dots or yellow dots on each other, red dots for when they don't like the person, yellow dots for when they do like the person. And this story features one of these people and he gets down because no one ever likes him and he's just full of red blocks. But he goes to his maker, he goes to the woodcarver and he talks to him about it. And the woodcarver says, hey, it doesn't matter what other people think of you. What matters is what I think of you because I made you and I designed you to be the way that you are. I want you to know today that you are of incredible value. There is a God who sees your value. And maybe if you need reminding of your value today, come to God and say, God, thank you that you died for me, that you gave your life for me, that you love me and that you made me. This is a prayer that you can pray. But God, our prayer should be, help me to see the value in others. Help me to love my neighbour. That great command. Love your neighbour. The world needs us to love them. It's only going to keep on needing us to love them as we come out of lockdown, as we have different disagreements about the way that that should happen. When we disagree about politics, hey, what we need is to love one another. As we adjust to a new life, as we have children that have fallen behind, you know what the world needs? It needs a church to love on them, to see the value of what they are worth, where people are, are struggling because of the debt that they've built up, because they've been furloughed or out of work because of COVID. Do you know what the world is going to need? It's going to need us, a church, to see the value in them and to love their neighbours. When the world is torn apart because of different beliefs and ideas about race, do you know what the world needs? It needs a church to see the value in their neighbours and to love their neighbours. Will we love our neighbours? So what an amazing morning we have had this morning, church. I just love Sundays. And guess what? We'll be back next Sunday on now.online.church. Or if you're watching on Facebook, you can watch church on Facebook. Why don't you invite a neighbour, a friend, a family member to watch church with you next week? Because it is going to be amazing. Before you go, I just want to remind you of a few things. So tonight we have our workshop churches together service starting at 6 30 for an hour on zoom if you want the link to that then just message marcus or sean and they'll happily send you the link um, and then this week we've obviously got our parenting for faith course our making disciples course our prayer meetings throughout the week and then youth and now kids at the end of the week on sunday so we've got a jam-packed week i hope to see you there at some of them it is going to be amazing we are praying for you as you go into this week god bless See you Sunday. Your love so great, Jesus in all things. I've seen a glimpse of your heart a billion years. Still I'll be singing
Oh